supermarket sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? Oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Standard protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. This is Brian Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University Sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU Athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. Yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, boy, I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah, yeah. I love my HBCU. Yeah. And man. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, she tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot. Yeah, and who the ball, ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Cavill, and I'm back in the building of better known as I should say, back. In the baseball park, we are live here for the SWAC 2020-23 baseball tournament, the last event of this academic athletic year, 2022-2023. Shout out to all the graduates, recent graduates out there, both high school graduates that are planning to attend HBCUs and those HBCU graduates that have uh, come across at this time. Let's see if we can give you a little sneak peek view of uh, the FAMU uh, as they're meeting at the mine, mound, or uh, meeting of the mine, if you would. Uh, currently, FAMU, for those that are watching this, know this, uh, FAMU is up 5-3 over Alabama State. Uh, this is a one versus three matchup in the winner bracket with both teams winning yesterday. FAMU over Prairie View. Excuse me. Alabama State over Prairie View and FAMU over... Damn, you beat Texas Southern. Texas Southern, that's right. Because Texas Southern, uh, I don't know. Texas, there's so many games and so many things going on. Texas Southern and Prairie View faced off in the loser bracket, and Prairie View won that. Uh, before that, TSU had won six out of five, seven out of five games. They're including one that started the year in that uh, classic in Houston there when things got off. Uh, but Prairie View, I guess, winning at the right time getting in the loser bracket, at least staying home. They weren't part of that too and barbecue like Jackson State as well. Yeah. Speaking of Charles Bishop, who was out. But let me get into it. Welcome everybody correctly. Welcome to episode 394 inside the HBC Sports Lab radio show and podcast, the show that is covering the HBC sports, the sporting HBC diaspora, as we like to say. All things HBCU sports from institutions large and small, from the NEIA, 
to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs in the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Speaking of Mike Washington, he's still on assignment. I'm trying to figure out what he's at. Charles, I can actually bet him. He is truly on assignment. In fact, we can send a picture. He's on the field, and y'all probably have heard him throughout uh, the weekend as he's been getting great interviews with the coaches, uh, managers, if you would, from both sides, post-game reactions after big wins for teams. Uh, and so he's been on the clock ever since 9 o'clock Wednesday, probably a little bit before that, just, you know, getting position and be here. Big time, Charles got to the big time. I guess I let him make it this time. So now I have 80 Drew, obviously talking about baseball, the cleanup hitter, right? True, indeed. Switch hitter, all the different terms you can use baseball is appropriate. We call him the professor here. He's in the building to help make sure we get it done. Um, so, me from our live at the ballpark, not our home studios, but we're here. So we'll give you a little update. In fact, show them a little background in terms of the game before we get into it and look at some of this news of the day. Because this is the appropriate HBC sports news of the day. So we'll give you, um, as we do the intro, give you a little bit about the background and, and let you see what's going on here. 5-3 again with fam you up on Alabama State in the winner's bracket. Um, they do have Alabama State has a man on first, uh, two outs uh, with the new batter coming up to the plate. With that being said, A.D. Drew, how are you doing today? My brother, my brother, my brother, doing, doing fine. Glad to be in, glad to be in this place where the Black College Sports Network feels love around HBCU baseball. No doubt, probably to... said a lot of love. We've gotten a lot of baseball in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Between the SIEC and the SWAC, man. Yes, yes, yes. Once again, you know, our two southern most conferences, you know, just it's great to be loved and, and to be to not have to work a baseball event for real. You know, this is not work what we're doing right here. Right, that's correct. That's correct. We this just, this just is fun. Bring it, bring bring it, you bring it. Updates. Yeah, bring but it literally as you see people running back and forth, much like Charles Bishop, when you're in the action, it's a little different. Yeah. All the pressure's on, minute by minute, uh, and it becomes long days. These days become long in a different way. But with that being said, what's on your mind in a little bit of the news of the week, HBCU world? What 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 is drawing your attention right now? Besides this tournament? Yeah, you can start there. I mean, we can start with this tournament. Uh, yesterday, clean games on yesterday. All these teams played well. Most of the aces uh, did their job. Game that One of the games that stuck out is, don't look at the score of that Fairview Texas Southern game, uh, Dr. Kavir. That was a one nothing game after six innings. And fam, you got it to Texas Southern bullpen. And that was that was the difference in the game, and that's really kind of been the story of the tournament thus right. far. Who can get into whose bullpen? Because everybody has a Friday starter or a number one, as we like to call it. Uh, but it's those twos, and threes, and and fours, and who may, who gives the extra out, and who's a, actually able to take advantage of the extra out because this tournament I've seen so many leading lead off runners stranded on third base. Right. But in what six, this is a seventh game of the tournament. And if I haven't been here live, I've watched them on the Swatch Digital Network. Speaking of Swatch Digital Network, man, Roger Kador. Shout out to Roger Kador for man telling it like it, T-I-Z, as they used yeah. to say yeah. back in the day. 
he, yeah, he's you out. Tell he really calls it from a coaching perspective. Yeah, and a coach that is a Hall of Fame on multiple levels and multiple areas, obviously multiple SWAC championships. So the credentials in terms of him calling it like it is is at a different level when you respect uh, who he is from that perspective. So and he just had a big strikeout by Florida a and M. Not to cut you off, Dr. Kabir, but a uh, big strikeout, FAMU leads 5-3 after seven complete yep. here. Yeah, in the, yeah. Upset it's in the making. Seven in the end of the stretch. So yes. this is the time it gets close. So at this point, I think you can start officially counting your outs. Uh, of this would be um, the first major upset of the tournament. Correct. Obviously, we had a couple of two seeds that have went down. Uh, in terms of the first day, oddly yeah. enough, both two seeds lost. Uh, and we had a close one talking about those errors. And the third thing I was going to add to what you were saying that I always look at is two outs. Can you make the third out the closer inning? Or if you're on the other side and the fan of the team at the plate, can you get the two out hit single that brings in an RBI or two RBIs? And we've seen that throughout the tournament about which teams could do that better, whether it was getting that final third out to move to the next inning or close out a game, or were you able to get it done at the bat to really close out the game from an offensive perspective? And so those are two things that I look at, which is the third, because I like the first two that you talked about in terms of what that looks like. One other thing with two outs, and it's actually a factor in this game, FAMU is up 5-3. But they've had two runners thrown out at the plate with two outs. Correct. And that's like a baseball no-no. You never make the third out at the plate. Correct. Absolutely. That's a great point in, in terms of uh, what's going on in the baseball. Getting uh, a little back to some of the other things that's going on here as we will continue to give you some updates to see how this game plays out. Uh, obviously, you have Tania. Uh, Morant, sister of NBA star John Morant, commits to, uh, to play at this uh, HBCU. As you know, Mississippi Valley State, you have XFL HBCU Co Showcase. It's back for years, two from the HBCU game day. We have a guest coming in here to make sure that we're going to get a, a live interview. Uh, successful coach that is fighting uh, to get it done and bring the championship back to his institution. So we'll bring him at, in after this break, which will give you a little sneak peek as he's Checking out to see the competition out there. <laughs> What's going hey, on there? Hey, you know, Rattlers and Wildcats usually don't get this close to each other. You can be professional. Just for a few minutes, right? <laughs> Speaking about fam, you, LeBron James, fam, you sneaker collab is here. And here is how to get them from HBCGameDay.com. Got the gift of being able to be able to get some sneakers out to the people. So you can go check that out on HBC Game Day. Michael Jordan assistant. In Morehouse with the first journalism graduate from HBCUGameDay.com uh, in terms of what's going on there. So that's a little bit about your news of the day. Let's take our first break because I know what you all really want to get into. Y'all want to hear about this interview. So let's get into our first break and then we'll come back and we'll get into a great interview uh, in terms of what's coming up next. Time to call a credit repair company to fix my credit. Hold the phone, man. You can do it yourself with Credit Versio. That's way too hard. Call the credit repair company. Most credit repair companies only work on one or two accounts at a time, making it slow and expensive. You won't figure that out for months. <laughs> Ignore him. Credit Versio's brilliant software scans all three credit bureaus, finds the accounts that are hurting your score, and guides you through the entire process. Anyone can do it. Let's fast forward and see the results. <laughs> wow, I fixed my own credit and saved hundreds. You can do this. Visit creditversio.com. T. Madden and Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T. Madden and Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turned my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden and Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, 
and parenting education coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Thank you guys for what you do for HBCU Athletics. This is a fantastic avenue for, for, for all of us. This is our ESPN, so we, 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 we love what you guys do. Brian, AD, Roy, all you guys at BCSN, we really appreciate what it is that you, got, you guys do for us. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Vilgo inside the HBC Sports Lab. As we bring you back before we get in the interview, we wanted to give you a little update here for those keeping up. Stay tuned with us. We'll make sure you. Uh, keep up with this, or as they do it, you have two iPads, go ahead and put one iPad there, turn the volume down, turn up us so we can give you an update, because we're going to give you some thoughts on what's going on at the games here from Coach Hernandez, who has some own proud and big news of himself, you know, as a professor. You know, I get excited when I hear about folks higher education. Uh, welcome to the show, Coach. Let me do that first. Thank you, Dr. Bill. I appreciate everything you guys do and allowing me to spend some time with you guys here while we're enjoying a beautiful uh, game here at the ballpark here at Georgia Tech where we got two really good teams getting after it that we all know too much about. <laughs> exactly. Sure. Yeah. And they come from that side of the, <laughs> of the division. Yep. So you really know uh, quite a bit about them. And I appreciate that. Um, as you know, we cover baseball. Mm-hmm. And we're going to continue to make sure that baseball gets its – time in the shine and it fits well for us this is in the spring uh, you know we get through with basketball men's and women's coming out of that winter give a little bit of touch everybody wants to do a little bit of spring football but then we get into it and with the only HBCU conference uh, that still has baseball as MEAC had four teams and Ags they play in the Northeastern Conference familiar with some baseball in the MEAC uh, before you trans- transition over to the SWAC um you provided me with some information in terms of how your team was going because I'm always surprised to say, what the one coming? There were little injuries, mm-hmm. a couple of losses hit up there, and you were saying, hey, we'll, we'll be all right. Yeah. So talk um, a little bit about how you had to kind of go through this season. It's 30 games. There's a lot of games to constantly up and down. Yeah, I mean, it started off good for us, and then we kind of hit the injury bug, you know, in April. Uh, but it's we faced it a little adversity. You know, and, and that's okay, right? Because at the end of the day, it's like baseball. we have to be, yeah, it's baseball, but we're trying to teach these young men, you know, how to handle adversity oh, in life as well. Um, so we did deal with the injury bug, uh, but at the same time, you know, it was a situation for our guys to kind of have that next man up mentality. You know, one goes down, somebody's got to come up and produce, you know, for us. So I think overall, we had a pretty good year. Um, you know, we ended the, the year with uh, above 500 uh, record, which is the first time since 2017. Uh, 20 conference wins in, in a very competitive East division, as the fans can see with, with this game going on right now uh, between Alabama State and FAMU. Um, yeah, you got, you got AD. Getting, getting a little excited. He's telling me, he's got, he's telling me, 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 in a row. Uh, but then, you know, you face all that adversity and you come up, you know, uh, pretty good out of it. And it happened today against Jackson State. You know, we, yeah. it, that was a long game, you know, 12 11 barn. And you had, to, that was another game where you talk about adversity. Absolutely. You had to fight back. Yeah. You went up, but then you went down. Yeah. Some of them were some big plays, great plays. Some of them were some costly errors, but your team kept fighting and literally fought to the end of the game to get the big plays at the end. To allow you, as we say in this time, surviving, surviving and advance, and that's the resiliency of our group. You know, we yeah. have a couple of walk-off wins that we've had throughout yeah. the course of the year, but it seems like you know the East Division yes. gets us ready for the SWAC Conference tournament. Okay. In, in my opinion, you know, not that to take sense. nothing away from the West, but yeah. it's such a, a dogfight every time we play against Alabama State, FAMU, Jackson State, a much improved Mississippi Valley program. Right. Um, and Alabama a and So it's a dogfight every time we get together. And I think that those experiences lend themselves to, you know, us being able to survive in advance and to live in a What do you attribute 
some of that. You know, I, I, I think the rivalries are, are natural in some of them, but then you have just some uh, over the years that you played close games, mile biters, that you've added some rivalries pretty quickly with the transition of conference. Would that be true, or do you see something else in the tribute? Uh, I, I think that that's true, but I also think that it speaks to the volumes of the recruiting of yeah. student athletes with not only the coaches in the coaches. East, but in the West Division as well. You know, those guys do a phenomenal job. We know Southern when it comes to tournament time. <laughs> it's just something about Southern. Um, you know, Grambling State led by, you know, Coach Pierce, a, a really good, you know, really good guy, really good recruiter, uh, development of talent. But you got Coach Riggins at Prairie View. Um, you know, and you got Coach Robertson at Texas Southern, who's always going to get his guys, you know, ready to play when, when it comes down to it. Uh, but just overall, the conference as a whole, I think bringing uh, FAMU and the through Cookman into it has heightened the awareness of the national brand of baseball in the SWAC uh, conference. No doubt about it. You know, right after football, obviously, everybody kind of got excited about it, broke down the divisions. But the first thing I told everybody to look at was baseball. I, I knew baseball was coming. It yeah, was coming. and that's the thing. Like, we understand, right? Football brings in the money, right, the <laughs> revenue. Uh, but there's something to be said about baseball in the SWAC conference. Um, it's got the opportunity to really put the conference on a national scale. Um, you know, you see Alabama State, who has 40 wins, and they've been receiving top 25 votes. Yep. Um, you know, Didn't early in the year, now. y'all got Yeah, early in the year, we did. Um, okay. Our Friday well, night don't starter. Don't be shy about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> our, our Friday night starter. <laughs> yeah, that was starter. the first time in... What? I know you talked about 2017. Right. Um, okay. And our Friday night start in Nolan Santos is second in the country in the Division One baseball with record. So you, you've got you know different players and different programs really putting on for the SWAC conference and represent it to the highest magnitude possible. And doing it both from the pitching the mound, from the plate in terms of hitting, mm-hmm. catching and fielding, doing a lot of great things. Yeah, it, it's exciting. I will not miss the tournament. And and what is been able to be a secondary joy for me. As you see here on the side of me, I get to bring my son. So last year was the first time I felt he was old enough for road trip. And so this has kind of been his reward after he finishes the academic school year um, and uh, does a great job. I hope he continues that part of it. This year it was double dose. He won a athletic uh, under eight, under nine championship in terms of their little division playoffs, I was kind of like, man, y'all doing playoffs eight times? But I'll take it. It's it's like that now. But okay. to the fun. (laughs) But hey, they did win it. So we'll we'll, we'll talk about that there. But speaking of academic accolades, uh, tell us a little bit about the fact that, you know, you finished a master's. Where did you complete your master's at? Yeah, so uh, I, I just uh, completed my master's at uh, Bethune Cookman University. Wildcat. So, uh, yeah, Wildcat, you know. Uh, but no, it took me back to, you know, during the pandemic. You know, oh. 2020, the pandemic affected you know, everyone. And we obviously opted out of athletics in the 2021 year. Um, I just wanted to give, like, my kids at home, you know, something else to look forward to. Like, hey, I'm, you know, 30 some years old dad, right? Full-time yep. job. If I can go get my master's, then anything is possible. Yep. Uh, but then how it lends itself to our program or our baseball program is our guys saw me in the trenches academically with them. So, you know, as much as everyone, you know, that plays baseball uh, wants to get to the major leagues, um, anything can happen and you always have to have a plan B. And I think it's our job as mentors to, you know, get our guys ready for the game of life. And I think by doing that, not only does it there you go, home run. Um, we'll let you finish that statement. Yeah. But that one was not warning track power, and we can officially say we are in the danger zone for Alabama State as we get, uh, was that a 3-1 from RBI home run? I know at least two, but I thought I seen one. Yeah, it was, two. It was just one two, two. Two, two. So two, the score eight. goes to 8-3 to three yeah. as they push one on early in the inning. Uh, but with that excitement, three runs in this inning now, so you're correct, there's a two RBI bomb just left of center field. Uh, that's between the 382 and 390 mark, so long shot there. Before we get to ask you a little bit about some power in these two programs, mm-hmm. especially for us that talk about the West Side mm-hmm. and a little more familiar in terms of the players there, even though we talk about key matchups across both divisions, let me make sure you finish – uh, just how important it was, as you were saying, about your players and making that connection that they saw you in the trenches and the value that you put on academics of saying, hey, I'm going to go back and I'm continue to make sure we do, whether it's 
athletically of chasing and winning championships, uh, but also doing it academically in the classroom. Yeah, I mean, they, they got to take care of their academics before they can get on the field. And, uh, you know, we've been very fortunate to come across some really good student athletes, you know, here at Bethune. And we've had a team 3.0 team GPA since I've been at Bethune for the last, you know, five years. Uh, but I just thought it was important where, you know, our student athletes were able to, you know, kind of see me in the trenches with them academically, um, especially with COVID, right? Yeah, and then yeah. the extra year of eligibility um, that most of the guys have, like if they wanted to pursue a master's degree, right. you know, why not continue to play baseball until they tell you, hey, you can't play anymore. But at the same time, acquire a degree that, you know, is going to assist assist our players because at the end of the day, our guys hopefully are going to be fathers and husbands, you know, and, um, you know, positive role models in their community. So anything that can heighten the, you know, academic piece to their athletic experience, we're all for it, you know, here at Bethune Cook. What would do you like to do with the two, doc two doctors and your professors? Let me know when you're ready to take on the doctorate. I know you got some coaching and some things that you want to do first. Yeah. But I, I gotta at least put it out there. Continue. I, I think I think <laughs> I think my daughter would not like that because she says she wants to be the first doctor in the house. Oh, okay. So, okay. So you're you know, waiting a while. Yeah, you're waiting a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I yeah, you gotta take care of that. We'll, we'll talk about after you retire your career then. Yep. Then we can look back. Absolutely. You still need some things to do. But on the sense note, this inning comes to an end, so it is eight to three. Um, and going to the bottom of the eighth. So we'll see what this happens as we're in the stretch inning. Six outs left. Can FAMU find a way to continue to be in the winner's bracket and get this major upset in this matchup? Before we talk about these teams, let's talk a little bit about your teams. A little more in terms of some key players that were able getting things done uh, during the season and who may be doing just as much in the tournament or more in the tournament. Let's start... Um, defensively in terms of your pitches? Yeah, I mean, uh, our pitching staff is anchored by Nolan Santos, who I talked about earlier. Um, he threw yesterday. I thought he had a pretty good outing, just, you know, one bad play, kind of turned that outing into a raid against uh, Southern University. Um, you know, Daniel Gaviria, a left-handed pitcher. Um, and tomorrow we're going to give the ball to, you know, a sophomore right-handed arm, you know, that uh, we're looking for him to provide us some innings and just give us opportunities. Uh, you know, and then the bullpen is anchored by, uh, Joan Gonzalez, uh, who's done pretty good. He was the relief pitcher of the year, uh, voted yeah. on by the coaches and SIDs and SWAC. Uh, Dale Machado, uh, yeah, freshman Pablo Torres. You know, the, those those three I guys have done a phenomenal job. In the shine, it's really tough for a freshman. Yep. It's just a little something bigger when a freshman can not allow everything to be so big. So. Uh, yeah, he's um, the, yeah, he's a good one. You know, his again, the the lows don't get too low and the highs don't get too high. So you know, the only way that he's gonna get better oh, is continuing. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you just continue to run him out there and you give him the experience needed and you hope that that assists in his development. Um, that's basically important. What about in the field? Um, one uh, Highland Hall. You know, I think he's leading our team in average. Um, you know, he was the newcomer of the year um, in the SWAC mm -hmm. conference. He was voted by the SIDs and, and coaches. Um, you know, he starts at right field for us. Uh, Garrett Chun, who was a junior college transfer from FSCJ, who was a participant at the Division II College World Series last year in the junior college program that, that he was at. Um, you know, Boris Pena has been a mainstay for us for the last couple of years. Uh, Robert Moya, I think all collectively, and Colton Olison, he's our heartbeat. You know, he's the captain of, of the team, voted on by the players. Um, and he just does everything right three times. Team USA, national team alumni, uh, played internationally representing the red, white, and blue. So um, overall, you know, it's just a really good group and Urban Escobar behind the plate with George Mercedes. From the plate, who's really got you excited in terms of really, not just uh, wow. in terms of more in terms of just batting for average and getting key RBI. Uh, we talked about this earlier to be one thing about the tournament. And you can answer this on the back end of that. What I've really noticed over the years, one of the things that I look at, who is able to really close out on two outs? Yeah. Or vice versa, if you're the team trying to push through, who can get that two out RBI or two yeah. RBI? No, so I, I at the plate, who has that. been able to do that either during the season or particularly in the tournament kind of picture? Yeah, that's a stat that we actually, you know, keep track of. Uh, see, in, in, I told you I was a bad man. Y'all yeah. don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but, but you know what? At the end of the day, um, you know, collectively as a group, they've all done well. You know, you look at a game like today where we put up eight runs against Jackson State, and I want to say four of those eight runs came on two outs. 
Um, you know, so it's a situation where collectively as a group, man, they've done a really good job all the way across uh, the board um, offensively, and they just got to stick with it. And we got to do it all together. It's not going to take one guy. The guys understand that. There's no egos can be present during this time because it's about the team first. And that's the mentality uh, that our guys have. And once again, you know, we were able to, to come out on top today and survive in advance for tomorrow. I want to talk a little bit more about this. So if you would, if you stay with us, we'll take a quick break. I'll we'll come back and, and finish up this interview and get a little more insight when you get a chance to talk a little bit more in depth about the tournament, about the team, uh, in particular who to watch out for and why some king things, you know, some scouting stuff that you can talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. So stick with us. We'll be right back after our second break. I have in me the ability to make you a better you. So if you work hard, focus, stay on point, you can do anything. Trust me. We made this track to tell everybody they can follow their dreams. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational. Powerhouse. Intelligent and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot com. Covers voice, covers voice, covers voice dot com. Always on, all the time. When we invest in ourselves, our glow, our vision, our vibe, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. Remember the revival? Relive the remix. Reunite for the Orange Blossom Classic. HBCU reunion experience. It's year three, baby, and we back with that fire. Calling all HBCU fans. Labor Day weekend. The I Love Jackson State University takes on the Venomous. Florida A&M University. Tickets are on sale now. Watch the game in premium style seating. Or watch it from a luxury suite. And of course, you know the halftime show. It's going to be epic right here in the 305. The sonic boom of the South. And the illustrious Marching 100. Who you rocking with? The 2023 Orange Blossom Classic. Don't miss the HBCU reunion experience. Labor Day weekend. Miami Gardens, Florida. Hard Rock Stadium. Trust me, we'll see you there. Oh, oh, oh. Check out OrangeBlossomClassic.com for tickets and info. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to allow yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor uh, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Neville with Inside the HBC Sports Lab. We're going to get into a little more, uh, and before we talk about the other teams, we're going to get put you on the hot seat in terms of coaches' court. Right. <laughs> Let's call it that. And um, in all seriousness, just to give perspectives, because we hear a lot of stuff, and most of the time we hear it, we hear it much more about the pro game, because that's what people watch, World Series, and those that are pretty big baseball fanatics, they'll catch some big – games, major league baseball, and at the end of the game, at the uh, pro level, a lot of times you'll see them load the bases. You might see it in college at times as well, even in high school. Uh, but also there's times when you as a coach know your players uh, and you make a decision based on what you've seen that year from your players or, uh, you know, a couple of games preceding of what is best for your players at this time. So there was an opportunity potentially at the end of the game to load the bases. Uh, but you decided not to. Can you explain the tactician side of why you went in that direction, in a different direction? It wasn't us. We were actually on offense um, in the bottom of the ninth inning, and I think it was a first and third situation. Uh, winning run was at third for us, and, um, you know, the infield was drawn in, drawn in. So we went ahead and took second base as a free base because the only run that matters is the one at third. Correct. Everybody else doesn't matter. Uh, but, but I think, uh, again, I, I wasn't in those shoes. Um, you know, pass ball, wild pitch, ends the game, base hit, ends the game, sack fly, ends the game. Because you started to put the pressure more on your pitching. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we put the pressure on them. So if you if you walk them intentionally to load the bases uh, or to have the bases loaded at that point, I mean, you, you're putting that much more pressure on the pitcher. We actually saw this last year between Alabama State and Southern Dan. Yeah. 
And then and the opposite happened in terms of what you're doing. And you saw put the pressure on there, mm-hmm. bang, bang, play. Yep. And, and it could have been with one out. To, yeah, yeah, with one out, you know, you, you play for the double play. Uh, but I think in that situation, again, I, I'm, it, it wasn't us on defense. I'm just what, what I'm thinking possibly could have happened. It's just there's no need to put extra pressure on the pitcher noting the bases when the only run that mattered was the run at third base. Like, like makes sense. Appreciate this, Sharon. And so we can at least get a, a perspective of why coaches look at things and stuff like that. What before we get into looking at some of the other things, what are some other technical aspects that you would like to share with young baseball players? What are some things that they play with? And you can either take this from young in terms of youth, or you can take it from high school whichever direction you would like to go in regards to what are some things that they really need to consider or things they need to be working on that either they have heard or may not hear, but really coming from a college coach, they give them a different perspective of, okay, let me get down and get this. Well, I think it starts with fundamentals, right? Learning how to catch, you know, learning how to throw, hit. Um, one thing, because I've worked in the youth space uh, before, okay. and the parents of, of youth baseball players need to understand that whatever they do today, does not really necessarily mean they're going to be a big leaguer, right? When when they're when they're older. Um, but I think too, in the youth baseball sc- uh, scope, because my son is ten years old and he plays locally um, down at uh, in Daytona Beach, let them have fun. You know, at the end of the day, you know they're not trying to fail. Just like I know no baseball player is. Just enjoy the moment that you have as a dad or a mom and, and seeing the smile when they come off the field, whether, you know, whatever happens, take them out to ice cream. You want them to enjoy the game because the moment that they get that uh, sour taste in their mouth, then the, the, the game doesn't become a game anymore, right? They, they're like, oh, I don't like baseball because my parents are doing X, Y, and Z, you know, just have it become an enjoyable experience for the youth of today so they can be on the field in the future representing a SWAC baseball program. Uh, that, that I think is something that I think the parents need to understand is just let it be enjoyable. Picking up right there, in terms of minorities playing baseball, um, I have a concern that I see players leaving away from baseball. And a lot more, is, you know, particularly in middle school, particularly African-Americans, Blacks, you see that, uh, leaving baseball in regards to, in middle school, to me, there's not really many program, especially in urban cities, you don't see many middle school programs, yeah. right? So unless you're having good youth clinics uh, in whatever area you are to allow them to so continue dance. to play, get mm-hmm. better, and have fun at it, Absolutely. most important, as you said, you start to trickle them off, and a lot of times they're going to other sports, and they still want to be active and playing. So now they move into football, they move into basketball. Now north and mid America, you starting to see me move into lacrosse. Lacrosse, yeah. I think too. A lot has Speaking to do. Of Florida, yeah, a, a lot know. has to do. I think also with the Soccer scholarship structure uh, within the NCAA. You know, in baseball, we, we're not a head count sport. It's equivalent to eleven point seven scholarships spread across yeah. twenty seven student That's athletes. Yeah. Where I get it, you know, tuition, fees, books, it's, it's expensive. You know, where if you go to football and basketball, you can get a full scholarship and you take care of your academics playing that sport. Um, I think, too, travel baseball is expensive. It's gotten expensive, <laughs> you know. So you have to pick and choose of, okay, am I going to spend two or three months in the summer, right, playing all these tournaments and trying to get seen by college coaches, or I don't spend tens of thousands of dollars and I can go play basketball, football, perfect that craft at an open park where you don't need a field. And and you don't need chances. If I can land a school scholarship, it's more likely to be a full scholarship. Absolutely. Or even a more of a partial scholarship is going to be more than what you get, more than baseball, what you can get in baseball when you can only yeah. do 11.7. Yeah. One thing with my experience with coaching, you know, college baseball is, I mean, there's no such thing as a free ride in college baseball. If, if someone says I got a free ride, I mean, that's a combination of academics, athletics, financial aid. You know, those are things that come into play um, when it comes to attending an institution and having an opportunity to play at the collegiate level baseball wise. So, you know, again, it, it comes down to the financial aspect of it. Is it economically feasible, you know, for X, Y, Z student to get that opportunity? Um, and and you just, those decisions are within the realm of the parents themselves and, and the student athlete that they do have. So I can see why. Uh, you know, student athletes are shying away from baseball uh, because of the resources um, and how expensive it is. You go to Dick's Sporting Goods, I will. a bat is yeah, three, four hundred dollars. 
a glove is another hundred. I mean, you're spending almost close to a thousand dollars before you even step foot on a field that you have to rent at a local park. Right. So the financial piece to it is is huge, no doubt. Well, we closed out the eighth inning, and uh, you have a nine-four score. You did get uh, Alabama State able to put one across the board, but uh, fam, you was able to kind of limit the damage there. So they're still leading in this matchup, eight to four. Going into the top of the ninth should be interesting to close it here. So since we're into this game, talk a little bit about more in depth, if you would, in terms of the Eastern Division, particular with, let's start with family. What do they bring to the table? We already know that matchup when they go head to head coming to the campus is already special. Oh, yeah. In terms of when they get it on and get it together, really in any sport, but baseball really excites me uh, when I see those matchups. But talk a little bit about FAMU. They're a good team, you know, fundamentally they're sound. Um, offensively, I know that they're capable of pulling up runs like how they are today against a really good pitching staff at Alabama State. Um, one of their arms, Hunter Beats, uh, he started the first game of the tournament. He's really good, should be a pro prospect, um, you know, at the end of the year. Um, catching wise, they have a really good catcher in Ty Hanchi um, up the middle. Uh, you know, Niles does a really good job for them. Uh, but just overall, really good, you know, solid team. You know, um, Jamie Shoup does a very good job with his program. And uh, we've been facing, you know, FAMU since I've been at Bethune for the last two or three years because of the pandemic and opting out of 21. And it's always a competitive scene, um, you know, when we're playing the Wildcats. Like I mentioned earlier, while I have AD Drew looking over my shoulder. <laughs> so I, I, I've seen the Prairie View, uh, Texas Southern matchup, the Southern Grambling matchup, Jackson State, Auburn State. And it goes, I ain't a little picture. Uh, when fam, you come down to Daytona uh, for that match. What what is the scene in terms of the fans? What are they on the fence? What, is, what does it look like? Yeah, how's it? Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's uh, I can tell you that I'm just glad I'm inside the field. You know? <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll tell you that much. I'm glad I'm, I'm in the dugout. I don't have to be out there for that. Uh, no, nah, but you know, it's it's a it's a really good rivalry. You know, we we obviously have respect for each other. Yeah, you know, as uh, you know, professionals, uh, leading young men doing what we need to do, but it, it's competitive. Um, I want to say we took uh, two out of three at home when they came down and they, yeah. I think they won Friday night on a two run, a uh, home run in the eighth inning by Joseph Perini, dead center. Um, and then we took care of business Saturday, Sunday. And um, even when we went down to Tallahassee, you know, for, for, for that series, we took two out of three as well. Um, but, but it's always competitive and anything can happen. Like you can't just say, walk into it, say, all right, I got this in the bag. I mean, it's going to be a gauntlet. I mean, that Sunday game in Tallahassee a couple of weeks ago, we were down three to one in the ninth and we came back and, you know, tied it. And then we eventually got walked off, but that just speaks to the competitiveness uh, between both programs when they play against each other. Give me uh, a little report on Alabama State. Uh, pitching heavy. I think that everyone in the SWAC conference knows that they can pitch. They they can obviously hit. You know, they you know, Coach Vasquez is the coach of the year in the SWAC for a reason. You know, with 40 wins uh, under his belt for this season. Um, you know, they're just a really solid team. They can play with the best of them. Um, and that's something you want, right? When when you have, you know, a team like that with 40 wins to, you know, to, to play the game the right way and they do so. Um, they can hit, they can defend, and they can definitely pitch. So just like what makes beating out, of, beating out of play at yeah. first, as you were alluding to, in terms of just how uh, fast and speedy you are playing at that level of baseball? Uh, talk about Jackson State in terms of uh, you had a big game with them, just in general in terms of the competition uh, between uh, your Omar Johnson, always a tough character in terms of what he brings to the table and his team. Yeah. A little bit about them. Absolutely. You know, Jackson State, um, you know, we played them for two years. Um, you know, since we joined the SWAC. Right. And it's a team that's going to want to create chaos on the bases. You know, they're going to do what they need to do to put themselves in a position uh, to be successful. And I think this year, um, prior to the game today, uh, we had split the season series, um, you know, with Jackson State. So, again, man, we, we have the utmost respect for Coach Johnson, what he's been able to do, um, you know, the longevity of his career at one spot. And that's kind of unheard of now at the Division One side with baseball. Uh, but he's done a, a fantastic job. And yes, they're the four seed, but that just speaks to the volume of the competitiveness of the conference in the Eastern Division with Alabama State, FAMU, Jackson State, um, and ourselves here. Um, 
last question is going to let you go here um, and get into this last break. Um, and then we'll give you uh, with that. I want to ask you just some of your thought process. And I know you don't alone make this and it has to go between the coaches and then it goes up obviously to the ADs. And finally, the presidents have to prove everything. But so far, what, what are your general thoughts in regards to um, – the divisional alignment. Would you like to see some crossover? Um, and even if you do, uh, is it not realistic just because of the travel and where we are in terms of maybe uh, finances come in in a different way? What, what are your thoughts about that? I can tell you that this is my opinion. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. Um, I think that's that why I set it up. Can, that it's, I, it's, I think you that, and the coaches, and then yeah. you got a lot of people above you. That Absolutely. You know, I, I would love to play everybody. Um, in the SWAC, to be honest with you, because not only do you see different baseball uh, played across, you know, the SWAC conference, <laughs> but you also are able to take your kids to different pockets of the conference so they can see, you know, everybody else and experience that. Like, I don't know, in, in our group, who's gone to Texas? Who's gone to Louisiana? Who's, who's done that? So, so you probably provide them with a student athlete experience. If you do that, and I think that if there is a way to do it, my suggestion would be everybody on the east and everybody on the west plays each other one time, and then you miss one west or one east team cross divisional. Yeah, so we'll play five out of the six teams in the west division with our five eastern, um, you know, division opponents. Uh, but again, that's something that you know if we bring to the table, it's, it's it, there's a voting structure to it, but. I can tell you for me, I, I think we do that and we can crown ourselves a regular season champion. And then we see the tournament one through eight or however we do it to get to the, So you have a regular season champion and then you have the SWAT conference champion. I like that. I'll say this, Coach. That master degree is coming into the order <laughs> really quickly on both yeah, sides. The issue in malice is just not me. <laughs> but the fact that you put in there, because there's some presidents and chancellors that will like to hear that part of it. Yeah. That you're sharing experience with your students. Absolutely. Because most of our presidents and even our ADs and VPs are very student centered. Yeah. So I, I like the fact that you were able to put that perspective of why it's important, not just um, so some people say that everybody want to play everybody. Right. You know, there's a part of that, but what it brings to the student. So um, I did want to share that again. And master's degree is working. I yeah. see. I see. Yeah, it, it only enhances the student athlete experience all the way across. And, and that's what we want for our guys and our student athletes is just to provide them with the best possible athletic experience along with the academic experience um, and have them represent their institution to the highest magnitude. We see Alabama State. It's just hard to get those outs there. Go to the wall. You get the out, but the runner moves to third. So it is one out now. And the bottom of the nine is getting interesting. A couple of runs. Difference here. So last thing, uh, I promise this time, anything that you wanted to share that I didn't ask you? No, I, I think that if uh, any of your viewers are here in Atlanta, uh, come out and support, you know, the SWAC baseball tournament. You know, at the end of the day, you are supporting the SWAC, but most importantly, you know, you're supporting the student athletes who represent our beloved institutions, um, you know, this week. So, you know, if you will go ahead and come out and, and see SWAC baseball, the same support we give football and basketball and all these sports, you know, baseball deserves the same, you know, support all the way through. So um, if you are in Atlanta, um, come by. If not, catch it on the SWAC Digital Network on YouTube uh, to head up the, the viewership. And, you know, thanks again for everything that, that you guys do in the live. I appreciate it. And um, anything you need, um, phone call away. I see it, and I know it. I know yeah. that's true. He's not just saying that. With that, Coach, I want to say, again, congratulations seriously on the uh, academic achievement, yeah. the Masters. Congratulations on a great season, and I know you're going to do everything this tournament to try to finish off with a little more magic touch, and I wish you well during this run. Thank we'll you. be here to watch it, that's for sure, and tell the story. I appreciate Thank it. You Thank you very coach. much. Yep. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab. We'll be right back after this last break and give you our last 15-minute segment. I got a surprise for you. We got uh, Mr. Deuce wants to give a little update, his thoughts in terms of commentary on the tournament thus far. So we'll make sure he gets a little bit, and then obviously AD Drew wants to get his uh, acknowledgement in. So 
Stick with us, we'll be right back after this last word. Time to call a credit repair company to fix my credit. Hold the phone, man. You can do it yourself with Credit Versio. That's way too hard. Call the credit repair company. Most credit repair companies only work on one or two accounts at a time, making it slow and expensive. You won't figure that out for months. <laughs> Ignore him. Credit Versio's brilliant software scans all three credit bureaus, finds the accounts that are hurting your score, and guides you through the entire process. Anyone can do it. Let's fast forward and see the results. <laughs> wow, I fixed my own credit and saved hundreds. You can do this. Visit creditversio.com. T. Madden and Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T. Madden and Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turned my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden and Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and parenting education coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Thank you guys for what you do for HBCU Athletics. This is a fantastic avenue for, for, for all of us. This is our ESPN, so we, 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 we love what you guys do. Brian, AD, Roy, all you guys at BCSN, we really appreciate what it is that you, got, you guys do for us. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a law, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Cavill with Inside HBC Sports Lab. This is none other than Deuce, Deuce Cavill. Uh, he won a championship uh, with his team this year. So we're going to give him a chance to talk a little bit about that and make sure he gives you his updates on this tournament like he did last year and, and give you some updates there. Before we do that, Drew, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, uh, can Fam, you find a way to close it out and get it done? Two outs away? Yeah, but it's been the last three outs for like the last 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, was, it was eight to three, then eight to four, now it's eight to five with a runner on first base. So we got to we got to close it out, and and the thing is, in terms like this, you want to try to close it out without going back to the pen. I like that because Great every point. arm that you use, you've only got so many pitches in these arms for the, for the weekend. So you want to go through, even though you hope that if you do come with somebody out the pen, they can get it done, and that's go ahead and close it out. But you know, you would think that by this time of the year. So let's go back and what and what has been your thoughts a little more on the tournament this for uh, of some of the big matchups uh, and just in general. I know you talked about um, a little bit of the outs and things of that nature, but just in general in terms of the facility uh, and being in Atlanta, how do you like that part of it this for? Well, let's let's start off with the basics. Me in Atlanta, everybody parking sucks in Atlanta. We, we just just got to get that one, get, just got to get that out the way. But actually, uh, there's, there's a parking garage right across the street from the stadium. Mm -hmm. uh, pl plenty of space within that garage. Uh, probably, obviously, school is out. So uh, that leads to more space there. There's another garage about a block away from here. So that, that actually winds up being one of the positives uh, here. Uh, if you've never been here, which this is my first time in this facility, it's a nice, tight, compact facility. In left field, they have a little pavilion that overlooks the field where the concession stand is at. I and like that little touch the, they put on here, especially yeah. like you said, to be so intimate. Yes. To be able to squeeze that in there, uh, it's a nice little way to add an additional money-making yes. component of it. Uh, unlike a lot of our parks where the concession stand is behind the grandstand, 
where the bathroom, the concession stands, and grandstand are all in one building and they're underneath. So a lot of times you miss part of the game while you're going to get yourself a hot dog. So I, I do like that. Uh, they, a college facility with suites. I think it was a, no. Yeah. And they've got nice suites. You can tell this was built for streaming, broadcasting. Uh, obviously, uh, Georgia Tech part of the ACC, ACC Network. ACC Network. And they, the, the camera angles, if you have been watching this on the SWAT Digital Network, the reason you're able to get those type of camera angles is because this park was built with that in mind or modified with those in mind. So the cameras, the reason you're getting good camera angles and get good replays because they've got the platforms built for the cameras in all the right places instead of, you know, a lot of times we're in older parks that we've had to retrofit and haven't quite retrofit. We didn't retrofit them with the thought of streaming. So uh, that's the point. Let's set this up, set the stage. Uh, FAMU, head coaches and all the players are at the mound. Uh, Last guy walked, so you literally have the time run at the plate. Men on first and second with one out. Um, so it's interesting how this is setting up one way or the other in regards to the beautiful close of this game. Let me add some tease a little bit um, before I go to Deuce. Um, before you close out on this, what do you think about this next matchup with <laughs> Southern and Grammar? This is a class report for the East, which was fascinating to me because everybody's talking about how strong the East was over the West. Um, and might be the case. Uh, pitching, you've kind of seen it lean that way. Certainly, in statistics, you say that, but on the first day, we kind of called it. Uh, we're close to a game off, uh, both in different ways, but the first day was 2 2 yeah. from the West. Yeah, it was. And on, uh, enough on today, you had basically divisional matchups yes. <laughs> with everybody playing up, and a couple of more uh, rivalry games, uh, which will be what we started off with Texas Southern Prairie View and what we're going to end off with Grambling and Southern. Exactly. The other one were East matchups. Uh, with Jackson State, but though Cookman, as you just heard, Coach Hernandez being able to pull that one out. And why in, this, did, in, in baseball, this FAMU Alabama State hey, is becoming I'm just going to say, uh, it's truly a rivalry in terms of these teams have kind of squeezed themselves in terms of finishing at the top one and two the last two years. Uh, and how they played out in the tournament was big last year. Obviously, Bethune Cookman is entering back in that mix, but you're absolutely right. I would say this is the top matchup in terms of just how the teams finish uh, in terms of rivalry, if you would, in terms of East. So, but what do you think about Grambling and Southern and them? Grambling and Southern should be interesting. The, the thing about Southern is they have at, above average pitching. I wouldn't say it's spectacular pitching, but they find a way to put the ball in play. If you put the ball in play in this game, you've got a chance. So that, that's what it is. And I'm, I'm sorry until that 27th out occurs against the Southern Jaguars, you cannot relax. Well, Alabama State has a big one at the back, 6295. Hey, Ty Hunt is at the plate. Uh, has had a big uh, game. And big bats, this uh, not only this baseball tournament, literally all year, but in terms of this team. So it'll be interesting to see what that looks like. Let me get Deuce on here. He's been patient. Uh, I'm going to get him in here. You can stay up there. Stay right there. Yep, stay right there. So what do you thought about the sweat tournament this year thus far? I think Grambling versus Southern. I think Southern might win the game. Okay, that Six makes sense. Nine, Who do you think is going to win this one, Fam? You and Alabama State. Oh, it's going to be Fam. You. It's going to take them some time. That's a good point. So talk about the fact that you won a championship there in the Missouri City League. How did that feel to win a championship? Oh, good. Five. I like the score here now. <laughs> but this is my third championship in the world, but it's my fourth championship. Oh, good. So you've been winning multiple championships. 
Since you've been playing baseball. No, I didn't even know we were that we made it to the playoffs at first. Well, it's one out, bases loaded, a single. Uh, by the batter now, Corey King is coming up. Um, so it'll be fascinating to kind of see with you. So we'll we'll see if we can stick around a little bit. We're coming up to our time, uh, but we'll see maybe if we can get through this bat and kind of see how this plays off uh, uh, as we get into it. So we're gonna ball one. We'll call it out as you can see it in, in this one. We'll just walk right through it in terms of what that looks like. Um, anything that you'd like to see in terms of how they're playing it. It looks like they're playing a regular dip, one out. Uh, we talked about this earlier uh, in terms of the bases loaded, uh, being up three runs. The E at the corner's back is short and second for the double play. Uh, yeah. yeah. We'll come back. Sure. Yeah, if you take a look at it right now, Doc, uh, you in at the corners. Actually, only in at third. Uh, you're back yeah. playing for the double play is short, second, and first. Right, no one in the count there, so two balls, one strike, one out. And we'll see if we can at least get this batter in, and then uh, we'll call it a game, and we'll make sure you get it on the other side so you can see it yourself and tune in to Swag Digital Network. Fascinating what's going on here in terms of what goes on here. Just miss. Ball is low, close one there in terms of that three one. Uh, so this is the playoff pitch in terms of does this get a little more interesting, or can we? It's going. Gmo said the series must be slightly behind us, so don't spoil. <laughs> Look away, Gmo. Look away. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I'm glad you put that out there. That's what this looked like. So uh, we're not going to tell you what just happened in terms of uh, uh, what happened here in terms of this play. As you watch it, playoff pitch pitch was ball was hit deep to right. Yeah, you won't tell you whether it was going in there, but you can see a little bit about that. But uh, last thing before we close this out, uh, eight to six, so a little closer, uh, but it's now two outs. Uh, runners on the corners, sacrifice fly there uh, to Time make the game first. a little closer. Uh, Time, Time runners at first, winning run is, is at, at the, the plate. plate. Wow, that's big time. With that being said, this is Dr. Cavill with Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you for listening to Inside the HBC Sports Lab, making you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, the Dean of HBC Sports, coming from Inside the Lab and the College of HBC Sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Mike Washington and Charles Bishop both are on assignment. Charles is right here playing, uh, calling, and getting great interviews and in terms of you see him at the plate doing his magic on the field, giving us uh, the new side of Charles in terms of things that continue to go. With that being said, again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Bill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we'll be here to Sunday, so we'll be able to make sure next week we'll give you all the latest and greatest. Make sure you tune in Sunday uh, for... Um, Special edition of Sports Wrap. Special edition of Sports Wrap. Coming live from the ballpark. We'll come live from the ballpark as they will do a pregame and postgame uh, in terms of what that looks like. But we're also looking to come back and check it out. We'll try to do a show tomorrow. Uh, stay in tune for that. It should be the same time if we're able to get it done. Right. Uh, we'll try to give you an update in terms of what that looks like. And, and we'll uh, have an if broadcast on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Just like they have a game, we might have the if broadcast. Okay. Right, okay. so if they're here, then maybe we're here uh, in terms of what's going on there. With that being said, follow me at Dr. Kenyatta Cavill on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Make sure you continue to watch ONG Strike Zone. Continue to watch Carlos Brown on Saturday, uh, giving you all inside. Inside the lab, inside the HBC Sports Lab on Twitter. That's inside the HBC Sports Lab on YouTube and Facebook. Two, two, two outs as we are trying to get out of and give you a close up. We'll see if we can hold it on. Maybe one more piece. <laughs> that, was, that was the slowest close out you ever read, Dr. Cleo. I just want you to know that. <laughs> Three B. Continue to move forward. And oh, it's a single. Continues. Oh, it's going deep. He's not going to be able to score on it, though. Oh, he's coming to the plate. Hey! Oh, he got in! What happened to the relay? 
Relay. Game is tied. It's tied. He, he, uh, he fumbled the relay, you all. He fumbled the relay. Oh, that was a big single. I didn't think he was going to be able to score so, on that. So now, at it, first, I did because it went into the corner, but right. he got the relay out of the corner so quick. But as you said, the second, the second, the base second base. relay was not able to get it in. in terms of so the now the game winning one is at it's second, second base with wow. two outs. So, hey, switch over to the swipe digital web or Satorial Black, Coach Roger K. Dog. Course? Say, 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 say